Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Redleaf Securities vlog. Today, we're super excited to have Viva Leisure CEO, Harry Constantino. Harry, how are you, mate? Very good, uh, John, and thanks for having us. Absolute pleasure. Now, Harry, it's very rare. I think you're the only Can Baron ASX listed CEO. So you might not be that well known. Um, great that you're from my hometown. Tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah, so I'm born and uh, bred in Canberra. My background is actually in IT. You know, um, knowing you for many years, you know that my background um, was running an internet service provider and a, uh, a, um, a technology company um, and then fell into the health club space. Um, started with one gymnasium in 2004. 20 years ago, January was our anniversary. And now, yeah, we're ASX listed, 169 um, locations um uh corporate locations and uh, about 180 franchise locations that's phenomenal now harry i have to admit in relation to viva leisure i've heard everything you're a gym operator you're a property developer you're a tech company how would you describe viva leisure for people who are not there or is it all of the above that i just mentioned yeah, look, we're not in the property. We don't we don't have any property on our on our balance sheet. Any we lease all of our um, locations, um, and that is because we get obviously get a better return being an operator rather than throwing our capital into you know um, hard real estate assets. Um, so we are a, a, what we call a multi modality. So we health clubs and boutiques. Um, operator, but we also use technology to improve the member experience because in the end, our product can compete with with um, free products. Like you don't have to pay us to go for a run on our treadmill. You can go for a run outside. It's free. You can ride your bike outside. It's free. Um, you know, you can do your weights at home. It's free. So the way we compete is by providing an excellent experience. And we do that by making the experience from joining seamless to accessing the club's seamless to the layout of the clubs which is all using technology to get it right so to put that into uh, example when you join online you can join online 24 hours a day you can download our app from the app stores you can gain access to the club you don't need to speak to anyone you can happen 24 hours a day you can upgrade your membership downgrade your membership put your membership on hold or via um, the app which makes the experience um, much better for people. You know, there's still operators out in the market where you need to, you know, visit the club, fill in a paper membership form and go from there. You know, we streamline it, we make it really good. And then we use technology and data that are systems that we've developed, you know, using my background um, to determine what needs to be in a club. How is the club trending? Is it trending more towards more females, more males? We're watching it live. We've got dashboards in our office which show the live membership count, the live visitation count, the trends um, that are happening inside clubs um, down to the last second of the day. And they're just constantly updating. So we know if something's not, not right. And this is sophistication beyond any other operator in the market. And what that advantage does is when we open up a greenfield location um, we're able to cash flow break even within four to six weeks so we can continue to roll out and if you look at our history going from 29 locations in june 2019 when we listed to you know 169 corporate locations now we essentially open um or acquire a site uh, to about 20 sites a year that's a site every fortnight every nine days i think we last gave the data that we are opening a new site whether it's an acquired site or a greenfield site and we can do that because we have the tech to you know make the experience really good get members online you know get to cash flow break even bang move to the next site very interesting harry because i look at your peers such as like f45 that have struggled like that whole struggle after COVID getting back into it like how is like is the technology that's made Viva Ledger successful in comparison to your peers? The technology makes it easier for, for members to join and gives them a better experience but also provides the business with insights that other businesses don't have so we see trends before um, th they actually become an issue 
um, whether it's a club is trending um, in one direction, we know that there's an issue there, whether it's, you know, the club is overcrowded, where, you know, the club needs to, you know, accelerate its refurbishment program, whether the club is, you know, has too many male members um, and not enough female members, and it might have a group fitness section, which is not getting utilised. <clears throat> so we make changes at that club to maybe remove that group fitness um, section um, and add more, um, you know, heavy weights uh, in that section, which keeps the the, the members happy, the, the men happy, for example, if that's what they're doing. Um, and in that scenario, what it does is allow the business to continually grow month on month on month net member growth, um, which is another thing we do a lot different. We monitor net member growth across our platform, like I said, live every minute of the day. Um, it is literally um, live. And what that allows us to do is, again, see these trends, see what's going on. You know, maybe we have to supplement some additional marketing and things like that. So level of sophistication that the other operators, like you say, an F45 franchisee that runs one site um, just doesn't necessarily do that. So we what we have in our network, our average 30-day rolling average is 85,000 visits a day into the network. On a Monday, we're now just shy of 100,000 visits every single day into our network. And again, that's just data feeding in. We're seeing it. We're seeing how it's trending. We're improving the experience. Compare that to an F45. An F45 has on average 150 members. 150 members. We have 350,000 members in our network. You know, so the data we can collect, the insights, the changes we can make are completely different to to what's happening with other players in the market. Then, obviously, our access to capital. Um, when we listed, you know, we're able to grow the business. We're able to build the right systems and everything, or uh, expand those systems. Um, again, other operators do not have that. Now, Harry, you really had a great um, quarterly results. You know, you've increased your revenues. Can you speak a little bit to that? The key highlights. Yeah. So um, it's the we released our half year results um, last week. Um, the first half was based on um, a, a strategic review program where we identified 27 locations that needed changes to the site as part of either a, um, a refurbishment, a repurpose, because we have a multi-brand strategy. We can repurpose locations from one brand and modality to another, and that's what we did. Um, so there was 27 sites we had identified as part of that strategic review. We completed 17 of them in the first half. And that was our focus. It wasn't on growth in the first half. It was just cleaning up these sites to get a better outcome. So, for example, we identified that that was a seven and a half million dollar program of which after 12 months would generate six million dollars additional EBITDA. So it's you know, like an 80 percent payback for us based on additional members, because in this industry, we add more members. We don't actually add more cost. Um, into the business you know we're not we don't have a unit cost that you know, are making a profit it's basically you know the lights are still on the staff are still there the equipment's still there so you know additional members and what we call utilization um, is very important so whilst notwithstanding we didn't con concentrate on growth in the first half we're still able to um, achieve a 17 percent increase in revenue and an 18 percent increase in EBITDA which we landed the half at 16.6 million of EBITDA um, when you look at half on half, because we have constant month and month growth and half on half growth, respectively, that was seven and nine percent increase from the previous half. So seven percent increase in revenue and nine percent increase in EBITDA. So we're constantly growing, notwithstanding we didn't even concentrate on growth. The second half is about growth, and we've identified twenty-one locations um, and signed leases for, of which about four of them will open in the second half. But we've also identified we've back to gone back to our acquisition strategy in this half, and we. We've got 10 to 15 locations which we will secure um, via acquisition in this half. So over the next six months, what you're saying is shareholders of Viva Legend, they had to they've got to look forward to your acquisition as a growth strategy. Is that correct? Yeah, look, um, out of our local, we've we've completed probably more acquisitions than most businesses um, will Ever. do in their lifetime. Yeah. Um, we have done 70 acquisitions in five years. Um, and we're able to do that because we have the technology to do that. See, we run our own billing platform. We run our own membership system. 
and we run our own access control systems, all designed in-house. So when we do an acquisition, we don't rely on a third party to, you know, software provider to get the members into the system and a third party debit provider to get the direct debits um, changed over and an access control security company to try and integrate, you know, members existing fobs with our technology. We do it all in-house. We actually have engineers here that build circuit boards. So we do an acquisition. We can integrate it really, really quick. And what I mean by really quick, we can have an acquisition integrated into our systems collecting data within one hour of acquisition settlement. That's the integration risk. One hour, we've got them in, we're collecting. No one else can do that. Um, That's unheard of. It, it, yeah, in the world. So when you look at our strategy, it's not a growth, it's not an acquisition strategy. We have done about 70 acquisitions um, and we've got 169 sites. So it's very close to 50-50 greenfield or acquisitions. We see what's going on. The good thing about acquisitions though um, is we we don't have any competition in the market. No one has the capital to compete with us. So um, there are no, no one's going out there and going, hey, can I buy your gym for $3 million and I'm going to mortgage my house to do that. Um, so, you know, we have a basically first mover advantage, but we don't have any competition in acquisition. So we set the price. So we've been able to continue to roll up in that, in that strategy. So over the next six months, it will be a little bit of acquisition and the acquisition, obviously the benefit is in FY25. And that's why we released our, some guidance numbers as part of those half year results. You know, we said that F, um, FY24 will achieve revenue of about 162 to 164 million. That's just on corporate sites. In addition to that, we have system-wide sales of about another 100 million on top of that for our franchise network. And EBITDA is expected to be between 35, 35 and 35 and a half million this year, which is about 20% up from what we did last year, 29 uh, million. But most importantly, we provided the quarter four run rate because when you've got a business that's recurring revenue and um, like ours and member month on month growth of members, we said quarter four will, will run rate at about 42 and a half to 43 million of revenue um, for the quarter um, and about $10 million worth of EBITDA for the quarter. So we just banked 16.6 .6 million EBITDA for the half. And we're saying the last quarter will do 10 million alone. So when you annualize that out, we're already starting somewhere between 38 and 40 million next year before the advantage of any acquisitions we do, before the maturation of any sites um, uh, that have opened this year um, and before any sites that open up next year will contribute because of the, the uh, four to six weeks cash flow break even and starting to contribute. So, you know, FY25 is looking very, very strong for Viva. Yeah advantage with technology and being able to identify a site is a key thing that investors should monitor and watch and that's why um you know we're having a close eye and we'll start getting investors in it harry thanks for your time ladies and gentlemen the ticket is vva viva leisure harry again thanks for your time mate thank you cheers